But I want to read from the uh, scripture where the uh, word that the Lord has given to me to share with this body tonight is coming from. And this is coming from 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. And I begin to read from verse number 1. 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse number 1. I am sorry I have to do what we normally do in our tradition. I will ask you to stand with me in honor of the word of the Lord tonight. 1 Kings chapter 17, I begin to read from verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Heab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Get away from here. And turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land then the word of the lord came to him saying arise go to Zarephath, which belongs to sidon and dwell there see i have commanded a widow there to provide for you so he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city Indeed, the widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar and see." I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and for your son. For thus says the Lord, God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. And the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord, which is spoke by Elijah. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I travel quite a little bit, and uh, as I travel, uh, one of the things that uh, usually caught my attention, uh, because I don't know how many of you, I love to sit by the window. Uh, number one, for many reasons, which I'm not willing to disclose all the reasons, really. Uh, but you know you sit with some people, they want to talk you to death in the plane. And sometimes I just want to close my eyes. I want to rest my head somewhere else. And sometimes, you know, they have been through some other things that uh, the smell may not be so good. So I can turn to the world. All right, let me stop right there. Okay. But, but I sit by the window. But one of the times that as I was flying and as we were descending, and the Lord opened my eyes to look through the window, and we were coming actually into Fort Lauderdale Airport. And as we were coming down and the altitude was reducing, I saw on almost every house a cloud gathering on all little cloud on the houses. And the Lord gave me this revelation and said, this is something I'm about to do. I'm about to release the blessing upon the people. And after that revelation, I began to teach for the past few uh, Sundays, in fact, few uh, months now, if for those from our church, I've been teaching something around faith. And, and it's because I know the season is here. 
And the season has come that the Lord is about to release his mighty reign upon his people. That the Lord is about to release something good, something powerful upon all the believers. Everyone that truly trusts in the Lord. And, and as I start to think about that, uh, this is the scripture that the Lord lay on my heart particularly for this evening. Well, one of the things that I initially immediately noticed as I started to read this scripture was the Lord has spoken through his prophet Elijah. And when the Lord spoke through him that there would be no rain in the land, there was no distinction. There, there was no distinction between the righteous and the unrighteous. There was no distinction between the great and the small. Yeah, yeah. But the Lord knows how to take care of his people. Yeah. The Lord knows how to take care of the need of those who diligently seek him. Yeah. The Lord knows how to take care of those who serve him. Yeah. So God told Elijah, even though the word is out, and farming is about to break out in the land. But you will not experience it. Because in the midst of farming, you will eat in plenty. And so that is the word the Lord is speaking to some of you tonight. That in the midst of farming, the Lord is going to feed you. In the midst of lack, the Lord is going to provide for you. In the midst of calamities, the Lord is going to pro protect you. When other people are crying foul, the Lord is going to put smile in your mouth. Amen. Amen. So the Lord told Elijah, you will not lack a day without food. Because I will do what I've got to do. Because you are my servant, because you are my son, because you are my child, I will provide for you. And so the Lord commanded the ravens. You know what the ravens are? They had to bring food for Elijah. Now that is something miraculous by itself. That a bird will fly in every day, every morning, every evening and feed the child of God. You see, one of the promises we have in ministry, Pastor Abraham, is that as long as we remain faithful serving the Lord, you will not lack a single day of your life. When we remain faithful to God, it doesn't matter what salary you have. It doesn't matter what, how many millionaires in your church. It doesn't matter because the Lord is going to open the windows of heaven and is going to rain upon your life. Amen. That is what we have seen God do time and time again in the scriptures. That it is very important thing to know how to serve God. You see, sometimes it worries me that a lot of Christians today don't take serving God very seriously. A lot of Christians today only say, Lord, bless me, bless me. But we have forgotten the way of blessing. So tonight I want to share with you how to release that cloud. Because it's the cloud, the water that goes up, that forms the cloud. And when you see the cloud, what comes down? Rain comes down upon you. So I want to show you tonight from the word of God how we are going to release that cloud to become rain or blessings upon our lives. Amen. Amen. When the Lord was done with Elijah, Elijah, the brook is dried. There is nothing else to stay around here for. I need you to go now because I'm about to bless a woman. This woman, I have seen her travail. I have seen her struggles. I have seen every pain that she's been through. You remember that in that scripture, you did not hear anything about her husband. You did not hear anything about other family members. She and her son, a single woman, she struggled and struggled and struggled to raise this little boy. And they were completely out of food. And all they had was this little flower. This little thing that they were going to share. And they had no hope left in them. I don't know who is here listening to me tonight. It looks like everything in your house is falling apart. There is no job. The money is funny. You have all these bills to pay. And nothing seems to be happening. I want you to listen to this word very carefully tonight. Because God 
God still has a blessing that he remain for you if you know how to approach him and say, Lord, release that rain upon my life. Amen. Amen. I'm sharing exactly what I know and what I have experienced in my life. And I continue to experience it every single day. I share a lot of testimonies, personal testimonies, that I think sometimes people feel like, oh, come on. Because how, how would I keep God's blessings to myself? Why would I not share what God is doing? Amen. Amen. Because all glory, as we were singing tonight, all glory belong to who? Belong to the Lord. All the praise, all adoration belong unto the Lord. So I will not stand before you pretending like I have been so, working so hard to get all the blessings of God. No. It is because of God's grace and because of God's mercy. It's because of God's kindness. It's because of God's greatness that I experience his favor every day. Amen. Amen. So God told him, there is a woman who had been praying. This woman I've been laboring. This woman I've been traveling. This woman I've been struggling. How will I release the blessing upon him? And a lot of times, sometimes we think that, you know, God, if you want to bless me, you better bless me. Be because uh, I don't care about other people. I don't care about this. Just me, just me, just me. And I found that in our churches today, prayer has become so self-centered, so self-focused, that we do not experience miracles anymore because we don't know how to access God's unlimited blessings. Amen. Because we have become so egocentric that it is all about me, my and mine and mine and mine, that God is saying, if you know how to truly just open up, you will unlock the door and that blessing, that rain will come down upon you that you have no place to contain it. Amen. Amen. This is the season and the Lord is about to do it. And so God told Elijah, through you, I'm going to bless that woman. What the woman did not know is that the Lord had already answered her prayer. And the Lord has sent this man, this common man, as far as she was concerned, he was, he was just a common man. She didn't know that this is a prophet. She didn't know this is a God sent. She didn't realize that through him, that is where her blessing is coming from. She did not realize that her miracle is tied to this man who does show up in her backyard. She did not realize that through this man, that the Lord is about to open the heavens. Hey, Calvary Fellowship. God has tied the miracle of some of you to this man. Because of this man, the Lord is going to open the heavens and he's going to release the blessings upon your life. Amen. Because of the ministry of this family, the Lord is going to make sure that you never run dry in your life. Because of this ministry, the Lord is going to open new doors for you. Because of this ministry, the Lord is going to open new avenue, new miracles, new favor for you because of this ministry. Amen. The woman thought, who is this stranger that showed up in my backyard? And this stranger said, can you give me some water? And she said, sure, I have some water. And this uh, visitor said, now how about some bread? Uh, he said, now you're crossing the line. You're going way too far. Why would I give you bread? All that we have left is this little flour. And when it is done, I just want to eat and my son and we have no hope left. The only thing we expect is death. Here is what I want you to hear from the word of the Lord tonight. To unlock this blessing, the first key is your seed. Everybody says seed. I always tell my church, if you want to change your harvest, what do you change? Your seed. If you don't like what you are seeing, you change your seed. You don't like what you are harvesting, what you are catching, change your seed. The Lord expects this woman 
to sow some seed. The woman didn't think that if God was going to bless her, she needed to do anything. I understand how the teachings are going on in the body of Christ today. Oh, no, 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 no. If they ask you for this, if they ask you for that, it's because they want something. Oh, pastors always want money. Oh, this always. I know there are a lot of times when pastors, you know, care a lot about money. I know a lot when other people, you know, they will teach you things, they will tell you things only because what they're going to get. But it is not always the case when the Lord, thank you very much, sir. When I'm going to actually keep this, this really neat, this beautiful. Amen. Amen. So, so, so it is not every time that the Lord says give that is going to take away from you. So many people are saying, I'm tired of church. I'm tired because they take, 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 take. Wow. They forget that God give, 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 give. Yeah. And when God give, 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 he gave his, even his only begotten son. He gave everything that he has. Amen. Amen. So God is about to open the door to this woman. And she was about to blow it. Because she said, no, I cannot give you anything. Why would I give you the little flour that I have left? The little oil that I have left is just for me and for my son to eat and we end right there. Not knowing that the Lord is about to blow her mind. The Lord is about to do something tremendous, something powerful that she will never, ever, ever forget. And so the man of God said, I understand what you are going through. I understand what you are saying, but I want you to sow the seed. Everybody says seed. seed. Now, when you are going to harvest, there must be a seed. I was raised by a farmer, raised on the farm. And I know that if you eat of the seed, you have no harvest. Amen. If you eat of the seed, you have no harvest. Amen. When I was a little boy, I never knew in a million years that I would ever be a pastor. Yes, sir. Never crossed my mind. Oh, I mean, when I see pastors those days, I said, they're too holy for me. I mean, they must be very perfect. And so I cannot be a pastor. Yes, but I remember my father will harvest from the farm. The first part of the harvest go to the pastor's house. Wow. My mother, will, uh, she was a businesswoman. I did not understand what they were doing. But after she had gotten everything, part of whatever is left, the first part go to the pastor's house. And my father would go into the woods and kill a big animal and we'll bring it home. And I remember one night I protested. And we were, I was really just looking at the animal as he was dressing it. And I said, my goodness, we're going to eat for a long time. And my father caught a big part of the the animal said, take it to the pastor's house. I said, for what? I said, not today, daddy. He said, are you crazy? I said, get this stuff and take it to the pastor's house. I said, so what are we going to eat? Every time to the pastor's house, every time to the pastor's house, every time to the pastor's house, tonight we're not going to do that. He said, the one you killed or the one I killed? <laughs> right, boy, take it now and go to the pastor's house. So I had no choice. I took it. I grumbled to the pastor's house. I dropped this big stuff to, to him. And he was so happy. His wife was, you know, just so happy. And food was ready. So I got back home and, you know, uh, we, my mother already prepared the food. But after many years, the Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. And after many days, you will take it back. When you cast your bread upon the waters, whatever good you do to the man of God, let me tell you, the Lord has his store up in your cloud. Every good or kind word to the, to the people of God, God is storing it up in your cloud. Every kindness you show to other people, God is storing them up in your cloud. You know, these days, before we ever know anything about the cloud, everybody say now, you know, when you have your, your iPad, your iPhone, save it to the cloud, send it to the cloud, send it to the cloud. And when you need your document, what do you do? Bring it back from the cloud. So whatever you don't send to the cloud 
won't come down from the cloud. Amen. So when God was about to bless this woman, whatever has been sown long time ago, God wants her to sow something again. Because rain is about to fall upon her life, upon her family. God is about to do something powerful in the life of this woman. God was about to give her hope, even in the midst of hopelessness. God was about to do something. And so God said, send it to the cloud. Everybody says, send it to the cloud. You see, when you see a co-worker struggling and you help them, you send it to the cloud. Well, when you see a church member can pay and you help them a little bit without boasting about it, you're sending it to the cloud. When you see the man of God and you say, Pastor, thank God for what you are doing. Thank God for your ministry. You're sending something to the cloud. And one day he's coming back. One day he's coming back. The first time I experienced that, that mighty release of God's blessing was we... My wife was pregnant of our first uh, son. We had no money. I just graduated from seminary. I never thought I was going to ever be a pastor. Don't forget. But now, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pastor. And I have the first appointment to a church. And we had no money. No money to even register her in the uh, antenatal uh, hospital. And I was really worried. I was really concerned. Both of us started to work new, and we had no money to do all that. Until one day, I finished from the church. It was a prayer meeting. We pray and pray. And sometimes when folks, Christians, when we pray, we don't even remember that we are prayed, that the, the Lord is going to open doors. We say, Lord, I leave everything at the altar for you, but when you are going, you pick it back up again, and you carry oh, all this trouble that I carry, all this mighty thing. Oh, oh, do you have problems? Yes, I do have some problems. I mean, you continue to claim it even after you have released it. And that's what I did. I said to, I was going back home after prayer meeting. God moved in the meeting. But then I was going back home totally hopeless totally despair. I had no idea what we were going to do. And it was on my mind. And the Lord said, you need to go to that church. That was my home church. Don't, I, I was about to branch into my street and the Lord said, no, continue. Continue. And I said, for what? For what? Because of the seed that my parents have sown, God is about to release the blessing upon my life. God has been gathering the cloud upon me, upon the ministry, that that moment, that hour, that was the time I needed God to prove that he is still the provider again. I had nothing, no hope, nobody to go to. I was too shy and too proud to even open my mouth to tell anybody about our struggle. But God understands my struggle. God understands your struggle. But when you sow the seed, especially when you sow it in the right place, let me tell you, it never gone away. Because you will never outgive God in your life. When you give to the man of God, when you give to the ministry of the church, you can never lose the benefit of it. Amen? Amen. So, as I was going, the Lord started to give me something. It's instruction. When you, as a farmer, when you sow the seed, every seed you sow, something must follow. It's an instruction. Everybody say instruction. When you sow a seed... You must be listening for the instruction. When you sow the seed by faith, listen for the instruction. This woman, eventually, she said, okay, so to bring you, I, I'm going to cook for myself and for my son first. And Elijah said, yes, go do that. But here is the instruction. You go do that, but you do mine first. Are you, somebody listening to me tonight? That is the instruction. Everybody say instruction. 
when God is about to release the blessing upon your life, he's going to give you some instruction. That night, the Lord gave me some instruction as I was about to turn to my house. The Lord says, go to the church where you were born. I said, I know they have a program going on. I am so tired for today. I'm going back into my house. I'm going to lay on my bed. I am going nowhere. The Lord says, go to that church. That is the instruction. And as I was going, and I got there, a thought, a brilliant idea came to my mind. I will not go close to the front. They know me in my church. You have about a thousand people gathered for outside revival. And I said, I am going to stay at the very back. Nobody will notice me. Nobody will know that I was there. So nobody will ever say, oh, pastor, come and pray. Or pastor, I don't want to pray for nobody at that night. I was too tired to do anything. And so the Lord says, you just go. Yes, so I went there, and the program was about to end. And I was staying right at the very back of the crowd. And as they dismissed the people with a word of benediction, I said, it's time to go. I turned around to, to exit, and there was a tap on my shoulder. God gave me instruction. Go to the place. Now, there was no way I would ever understand God's instruction to go to that place if I don't understand God's instruction to sow seed into his, into his kingdom. If, if my parents never understood how to sow seed, there will be no cloud gathering over my life. Amen. I got there, and this man tapped me on the shoulder, and he said, Pastor, he said, where's your wife registered? In my culture, nobody asks questions like that. No, nobody bothers. You don't even ask how many months is your pregnancy. In my culture, nobody asks questions like that. So he said, I don't want to. He saw my eyes changed. He said, I, 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 I'm sorry, I don't want to get into your business, but something is just developing in me. He said, where are you, where are you registered? Um, I said, don't worry about it. We will take care of that. I said, God is in charge. I said, he said, well, uh, if you change your mind, I just want to let you know that God put it in my heart to pay for every penny that you will need from now until delivery. Wow. I said, what? Uh, he said, uh, so do you, uh, do you like so so hospital and that is the most expensive hospital in town where you have the the governor's wife want to deliver that is where they go if the governor wants to have surgery that is where they go it's so expensive place so he said you like so so hospital if you were what were you going to say i said yes of course i absolutely love that place he said yes yeah, so that's where we're going so Whatever it is, I don't care how much it costs, it's on me. That is God who just rained down on me the blessing that I, the, the seed that has been sown is coming into harvest at this very moment. Amen. There are many people, this here, here is a prophetic word here tonight. There are somebody, some people here tonight your parents are sown a good seed your people are sown a good seed and you have never reaped any of it the day today is your day and the lord is opening the windows of heaven and you will receive those blessings from left from right from front from back blessings will come all over you in the mighty name of jesus christ amen so when god say sow the seed Ladies and gentlemen, he followed it up with an instruction. He gave instruction to this woman. Throw prophet. You do mine first. You prepare for the man of God first. Well, we only have very little. I understand. You, out of your lack, give something to the man of God first. It may not be big. It may not be huge, but I don't care how much it is. I don't care how big it is. You take care of me, I take care of you. 
You take care of my man, I take care of your child. You take care of my child, I take care of your family. God was trading with this woman. This woman didn't know anything better. She didn't know what was about to happen. But she was listening to the instruction. You see, the seed wouldn't have meant a thing. The instruction wouldn't have meant anything if she did not obey. So everybody say obedience. See, when God, through Elijah, said to her, if you do this, your bean of flour will never dry. Your jar of oil will never run dry. Because you have decided to obey my voice, there will be nothing that will stop the fulfillment of what I want to do in your life. Because you have decided to heed the instruction, there is nothing you will lack in your life. The blessing will come from every angle into your life. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, when you listen to the voice of God, God has never disappointed. Man will disappoint. A big prince will disappoint. People that have money will say, well, I don't like you anymore, so I'm not going to give it to you anymore. But if you put your mind to them, you are going to be disappointed. But if you listen to the voice of God, there is nothing in your life that you will ever, ever lack that the Lord will not supply. Amen. God has shown this over and over and over again. This woman could have sown the seed. She could have, you know, hear all the instruction. But if she does not obey the instruction, it means nothing. And that is where we are in the house of the Lord today. That a lot of time, God will say, if you touch it, I'm going to bless you. You say, well, well that doesn't make sense. Now, as I was teaching our church last Sunday, faith don't make sense. Faith makes no common sense. Because it is not a common sense. It is an uncommon sense. Faith, God will say, if you do this, I'm going to do that. Now, that night, it didn't make any sense whatsoever to me why God would say, go to your home church. I was coming from the church. I was the pastor in the church. I have already prayed for myself, prayed for the people. God knows that the prayer I offer there is not going to be different from the prayer they are offering over there. So why do I need to go there? It, it, it makes no sense. And, and, and God knows that all day I've been in the office. I didn't get back. I was busy visiting people, praying for people. Then we have prayer meeting and all. It makes no sense. But faith don't make sense. When, when God says, if you release it, I'm going to fill you back. Our common sense is what we always run to. Oh, they want to do you now. Oh, they want to, oh, those people with sugar-coated mouth, don't, don't listen to them. You see, once we allow our common sense to control what we do, you lose your uncommon sense, which is your faith. When God says, get up, you get up. When God says, sit down, you sit down. When God says, run, you run. When God says, shout, you shout. God told the Israelites, if you will go around the city of Jericho and begin to shout once every day, and then on the seventh day, shout seven times, and then somebody will say, I'm too intellectual for that. Okay, that makes no sense. No, it doesn't make common sense. But it makes uncommon sense and that is faith amen. amen so the instruction was given and what is necessary immediately after the instruction was given is obedience this woman went and prepared the little cake for this prophet and prepared the little uh, remaining ones for herself and her son and after obedience ladies and gentlemen it is harvest it is harvest there is no way in your life when you obey the voice of God, you are tapping into the unlimited resources of God. Amen. Amen. Till today, I was sharing with Pastor before we came into the sanctuary. 
You know, I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense to think of a child of, uh, of a farmer. Uh, uh, you, <laughs> you've never seen where I came from. You, you've never seen the kind of condition. I studied in my elementary school with no electricity. I studied with uh, what you call the oil lamp. And in the morning, you have to clean your, your nose like this and everywhere. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Well, you have to clean your nose and everything will be so black. I'm already black, you know. And, and, then, and then when you clean it, it's even more black than I am black already. Because of the smoke from the oil lamp. And, 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 and we are no toy, we are nothing. I walk three miles to go to school in the morning and three miles to get back home. I mean, today my children would say, if the AC is too cold, it's too cold, it's too hot, it's, you know. I mean, they, they live in pleasure. But I had none of those. Okay? And in that place, you will never ever think. And some, somebody told me a few years ago, and, and, and he said, what is your mission? I said, my mission is to, uh, uh, after I complete what I'm doing, I'm going in for my uh, doctorate degree. And he looked at me and he chuckled. He said, if it is so easy, everybody will have one. Meaning, you? But I wish I could see him today to say, mm -mm -mm. can you see me now? <laughs> can you see me now? Amen. Because when God is going to do something, no power in hell can hold God back over your life. When God is about to show you his mercy, show you his kindness, no kingdom of heaven, uh, no kingdom of the devil can hold you back. What the kingdom of heaven is about to release on your life. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, God is faithful to God's word. You sow the seed. You follow the instruction. You obey the instruction. And you tap into harvest. Once you know how to sow the seed. Listen now. It is not just sowing the seed. But sow the seed in the right place. And when you sow the seed in the right place. Listen for instruction. Many times we sow the seed, we don't listen for instruction. And God is saying to you and to me tonight, God is wanting to train our ears to hear him. God is training your, your, your soul to understand his voice. So that there are many people here. The Lord is about to lift you from where you are but fear is holding you back because we're not listening to instruction god is about to open a door for you and he's saying that if you begin this if you can do this i'm going to open the door for you there are many millionaires that never be why because they never listen for the instruction when god says i want you to begin a small business no it makes no sense yeah, it doesn't make sense. But if God is saying it to you and you understand the voice of God, if you do it, God will surprise you in, in a big way. Yes, sir. A lot of people say, well, I'm too old. I can't go back to school now. Now, you're never too old for anything that is in your soul. You, you're never too late for anything. So, if you, God is saying to you, I want you to go back into a technical school. God is about to launch you into something different. Something powerful. And you say, well, I'm too old for that. Where am I going to get the money? Where, who is going to sponsor me? Who is going to... You try it and let God surprise you. You follow in the instruction of God and let God show you what is made of. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I want us to pray. I want us to talk to the Lord. You see, whether we like it or not, God is blessing his servants. God didn't wait for anybody before he started to provide for Elijah. Elijah didn't need to know a millionaire. Elijah didn't need to know anybody. All he needs to know is the superman. The man upstairs. And once he knows God, because the Bible says, 
those who know their God, they will do exploits. They will do great things. So, man of God don't need to knock on your door, do this, or look at you in a certain way. If God lays something in your heart, do it. Not because he has already. You know, this is where we enter into our common sense. Well, the man is well dressed. Why would I give him anything? The, the, the man already has money. Well, why would I give it to him? Well, excuse me. Elijah didn't come as a pauper to this woman. He came as a blessing to this woman. And God wanted to open the door for her more than for him. For him, God can send other ravens. For him, God can bring water out of the rock. For him, God can send everything that he needs in any way. God wanted to send it. But God tied her miracle to this man. This is your anniversary. And tonight is a special night. Because this is the anniversary of these servants of God. And you are going to bless these people. And your people will bless this family. And when you sow into their life. And I'm not just talking of tonight alone. When you get on your knees and you pray for your pastor. You are sowing into their life. When you get on your knees and you hear something nasty about your pastor and you run to him and you say, Pastor, this is what I heard. I don't want you to fret about it. I already defended you without you being there. You are sowing into your own life. You see, when the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. When, when, when you are in a conniving place and you say, oh, pastor, God bless you, pastor. But you know that what you have done behind is evil. Let me tell you, you cannot deceive God. A, a, a man can never deceive God. God is a faithful God that when we are faithful in every dealing, he was going to be faithful to you. Calvary, I want you to support your pastor. With your prayer, with your support, with your gift, with everything, and know that the Lord has tied your miracle with this man. And when God opens the blessing for you, he will bless you not just because of him, but because you listen to the voice of God. Amen? Amen. Will you stand with me and let us pray? There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of God. There shall be seasons refreshing coming from Savior above. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we plead. Mercies Drop round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Tonight we need a shower of God's blessing. There is that cloud that has already gathered. And the Lord is about to release that rain upon your life. And so, tonight I want you to open your heart to the Lord. And say to the Lord, I want to do your will. I want to sow every seed in me to into your kingdom. Into your fertile soil. Not just to give monetary value, but every way I can support the ministry of this man of God and this woman of God. Lord, give me the grace to do it. Because I know when I bless them, when I pray for me, for them, I am praying for me. When I uh, respect them, I am respecting you. When I honor them, I'm honoring you. When I uh, wish them well, I'm wishing me well. 
Because what you sow is what you get. And the Bible says, when you give a cup of water to one of these because they are my servant, the Lord says you will not lose the benefit of it, not here on earth and not even in heaven. So today, we celebrate this man of God and this woman of God. I want you, Pastor uh, Brown and Mrs. Brown, if you will come forward here. And church, if you will stretch your hands to them. And I want you to pray for them. Pray for God's revelation. Pray for God's anointing. Pray for their children. Pray for their marriage. Pray for their lives. For their health. Pray for them. blessing you want in your life pray it for them right now When you sow seed, your season of harvest is definite. When you sow seed, you are set a date on your own harvest time. I want to say a word of prayer because I'm looking at the time and I know that the Lord is in the midst tonight. What I know the Lord is giving you is a revelation through his word. You see the, the man of God came into this woman's life. He wasn't shaking around. He wasn't having to speak in, you know, in a different way to, to make her know that this is the man of God. He spoke the word directly into her life and God God stamped every word I'm going to speak the word of God into your life and I know there is power behind every word that will be coming forth upon you upon this uh, 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 man of God and this woman of God God is going to do something miraculous I just want you to catch it by faith i just want you to to just release that fear that uh, anxiety that that uh, common sense let that common sense push those common sense aside and say lord i need that uncommon sense to to really grasp what you are doing in my life right now father i want to thank you lord i want to give you glory because of the revelation that you have given that the, the season is here. The season when you're going to release the rain upon your people. They will not have to jump. They will not have to run. They don't have to scream. But when we speak the word, I know Lord that you hear us. So tonight I pray for every single soul under the sound of my voice. Because of your word, because of your promise, that this is the season of our miracle. So every desire of your children tonight, there are some people right here who are dealing with some real sick sickness in their body. I rebuke that sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the name of the sickness. The scripture says the name has been given to us that is above 
every name that in the name of Jesus every name was bowed so whatever the sickness may be right now at this moment disappear in the name of Jesus Christ let there be healing taking place right now 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 in the name of Jesus Christ everyone that has been bound by certain habits bound by demonic forces tonight you are delivered in the name of Jesus every yoke of the enemy is broken in the name of Jesus Christ receive your deliverance right now 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 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ you are delivered right now you are set free 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 right now in the name of Jesus Christ every chain of the devil you are broken every demonic power you are destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ thank you father thank you father thank you father thank you father there are many people that are hitting the rock bottom right now to pay the bill to put food on the table is a challenge tonight i prophesy upon your life let the door of heaven open upon you right now let the door of heaven open upon you right now in the name of jesus christ every cloud that has gathered over your life the cloud of all the kindness that your parents and grandparents have put into the cloud let them release upon you right now let the rain fall right now in the name of jesus christ Lord, we will live here tonight and i pray for every single soul that they will have testimony testimony of new door opening favor in the name of jesus favor over your children favor at your job favor in your neighborhood favor over this church favor over your children in the name of jesus christ oh lord we give you praise and honor and lord i want to thank you for this man of god i want to thank you for this woman of god thank you father for you have planted them as example for you and lord we declare your blessings over their lives we declare your miracles over their life we declare your anointing over their lives yes i pray in the name of jesus let heaven open upon you 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 anointing of god come down upon this planet in the name of jesus christ holy ghost divine in a fresh way in a fresh and a new way be released upon this man of god tonight in the name of jesus christ yes lord i pray for this woman of god i pray for the anointing of god i pray for the power of god to come heavily upon your life to come upon your life right now to fill you to the overflow to fill you to the overflow to fill you to the overflow in the name of jesus christ i pray for your children i pray favor over your children i pray blessings over your children i pray open doors for your children in the name of jesus christ everywhere your seats are they will experience a new god a new blessing the reign of god's miracle over them i pray over your marriage that you will be strengthened in 
in the name of Jesus. Every area that the enemy may want to come, the Bible says it that if the enemy will, will come in one way, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against the enemy. But no matter where the enemy may want to come into your home, into your marriage, tonight the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against the enemy. In the name of Jesus, I pray for divine health. I pray for divine healing over your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Oh, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Begin to worship the Lord right now.